sense of confidence when you're used to beating a team. Sometimes you just have a, you have a, a team's number and you can beat them just because you've got more confidence. And maybe that's the case today. They have been really in the last couple of weeks. They got spanked pretty good by Colgate a week ago. So they do need a win, although the games are one and two in the Ivy League, so they got a shot in an Ivy League game. So now it really becomes the important part of the schedule. There are 119 teams playing Division I AA football. Dartmouth ranks 117th in defense. John Gibbs has done all he can this year, and he'll do it again here today. We can lie with statistics. I don't think the defense is that bad. If you look at those rankings, I think they're a bend but don't break type of thing. In fact, the two Good games afternoon, that we've seen and we've been at, the defense really has kept them in the game. They have given up their share of yardage, including on the ground, but they've gotten turnovers. They've shortened up the drives, which is important for the offense because this offense struggles to put 80-yard drives together. So they really are the important factor. John Gibbs is the key guy, and uh, he's going to be keyed on the on the other side of the ball with the most important guy for Yale. You know, they're facing a really good Yale offense here today, paced by Richard Bartholomew, the transfer from the Air Force Academy, averaging 100 yards per game. Well, he does one thing that you can't teach. You use the first cliche of the day, and that you can't teach speed. 4-4 speed in the 40. He's very fast. You've got to contain him and keep him inside the ends, because if he gets outside, he can make the big play. And if he makes the big play, that puts Dartmouth at a real disadvantage, because they don't have the kind of offense that can come back from a big deficit. So they got to stay on him. Sometimes on homecoming weekend here in Hanover, the game becomes secondary. There are a lot of people, alumni back in town, some friends and some former players, and here to keep tabs on everything, off the field and around the field is Jamie Staten. Jamie? All right, Eric, there are seven history majors wearing the dark green of Dartmouth University football today, and they hope modern history repeats itself. As you said, Dartmouth's eight straight wins over Yale. Head coach John Lyons has never lost to Yale. Looking farther back, though, the very first game ever between these two schools, 1884, won by Yale, 113 to nothing. These history majors want no part of ancient history this afternoon at Memorial Field. Eric. All right, Jamie, thank you very much. We are standing by for the kickoff. We'll be back with that and the start of today's game right after this. Dartmouth football family lost a dear friend on Thursday when receivers coach Frank Hershey passed away after a long and courageous battle with cancer. Frank devoted his adult life to his family at home and to Ivy League student athletes, spending 11 years at Dartmouth. A moment of silence was just observed in honor of Frank Hershey, who was 56 years old. So a very emotional day here for the Big Green at his homecoming, of course, and that always brings a little extra added intensity level, but also a lot of these Dartmouth players and certainly the coaching staff very co close to Coach Hershey. And it will be an emotional day today for the Big Green, no matter what. Yeah, my feeling is that those are uh, the uh, observing the death probably will have more of an impact in the way they play. You tend to focus when you put somebody like that in, in, in your mind. You want to play well and you're focused. And that, I think, will have more to do with how they play today than even the big crowd, which always pumps you up. And that's the big thing about homecoming it's it's uh it's a nice weekend but the crowd is always bigger and now you have a way of giving you a little bit of boost and energy well speaking of boost and energy they tried to give dartmouth a little extra little zip as they came running on the field coach lyons out of the smoke the scenes of miami of florida <laughs> you know for the super bowl here they come out into the field the big green that was just a few moments ago as dartmouth came out here in front of a growing homecoming crowd here. Everybody still filling in as we are ready to play some football. Dartmouth will kick off. Alex Zizinski will do the honors. And we're just about ready to start here in Hanover. We are underway. The kick will come down to Billy Brown for Yale at the 12-yard line. Brown up the far sideline is brought down at the 26. That's where Yale will set up. First and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Let's take a look at the Yale starting lineup. First of all, Rashad Bartholomew, we talked about him in the open, the transfer from the Air Force Academy. Front line is anchored by Joe Montesano, but keep your eye on Marik Rubin, 6'8", 320, number 62. He's a big guy. We'll run down the Dartmouth defense after this first down play from Yale. And there you see Joe Wallen, the quarterback, number seven, scrappy kid, a junior from Mentor, Ohio. Good runner, good passer on the season, completing 53% of his passes and averaging 5.6 yards a carry when running the football. 
And I think he's got to be mobile. They've got such a big offensive line. Look for him to roll out and look for lanes to pass the ball so he doesn't have to go over the top of those big guys. First and ten. First play from scrimmage. Dartmouth bringing some pressure. They get into the backfield, and Wallen is hit for a loss. The loss of one. Good job by the Dartmouth defense coming right out of the blocks. That defense on the front line is anchored by Brent Crombie, leading Dartmouth with two sacks so far this year. As you take a look at those players who are up front for the Big Green, and there you see Brent. John Gibbs, the linebacker, leading tackler for the Big Green, center of that linebacking core. And in the secondary, Tom Reeser has broken up two passes this year and forced a fumble. Very active back there, number 28. Second down and 11. Wallen the pass for the first time. Throwing, and his receiver fell down. It would have been difficult for Ken Marshner to get to that football. It was thrown pretty high, although Ken is pretty tall. 6'6", six, six, also plays on the basketball team at Yale. Even when he was laying down, he looked like he was still <laughs> could have got his hands on that. He just, his legs got tangled up with uh, Verber on the, as they tried to go to the sideline pattern, he fell before the pass was thrown. Look at the size of some of those guys. Ryan, number 53, is 6'5", 330 pounds. Ruben, 62, is 6'7", 320. Marshner is 6'6". Six, six. That's quite a front line for a hoop team. Third down and 11. Wallen will roll to the near side. The lefty with time and complete at the 38-yard line. That will be enough for a first down. Boy, that was a patient play by Wallen. He just rolled and waited and outran people, took it to the sideline until, until the receiver showed himself to be open. And then he, right there, he notices and just delivers it right at chest high. Beautiful pass on the run. Nice play. That was a matter of patience on the part of a seasoned quarterback. You, know, you can tell a big team, or the way to tell a big story that a team is big, when you look at the 6'8 guy standing next to everybody else, and he doesn't look like he's w much bigger than everybody else, <laughs> he fits and he in. doesn't. Yeah. They spot it at the 39-yard line, and here is Bartholomew for the first time, and Dartmouth is there to stop him. Adam Kane leading the charge. Just snuffed that one out. He just stepped right into the gap, and Bartholomew has nowhere to go. He's in the right-hand side of your, I'm sorry, the left-hand side of your screen, just steps into the gap, beats the block, and just holds on and throws him out of bounds. That was a nice job by Kane in reading where the running back was going. Bartholomew, second in the Ivy League in rushing, averaging 100 yards a game, but Kane throws him for a loss of five. Second and 15, and Wallen will set up in the shotgun. Dartmouth aggressive on defense here in the early going. The pass is complete to Bartholomew, but Kane once again, shadowing him the whole way, takes him down for a loss of about half a yard. Tell you what, it's a good thing he was there because he was the only guy who had read that screen. The entire left-hand side of the sideline was wide open, and if he misses that tackle, we're talking a big game. Look at the pressure on Wallen early on. Let him go on the, on the screen, but there is Kane, and there's nobody ahead of Bartholomew. So uh, that was a big play-saving tackle. Third down and 16. They need to get just about to the 50-yard line for a first down. Wallen in the shotgun once again. Quick throw. Throwing out to his man. He's got him knocked out of bounds. Short of a first down. It'll be about, about a half, uh, a, yard half a yard short. Just about. The pass complete to number 83, Brian Sharp, the tight end, who is back in the lineup after missing last week with a knee injury. That was a nice job. Look the way he puts his head down. He knows he's got to get to the 50. Big guy, take on the smaller guy. Reeser holds his ground and is helped by Varney, who comes in to put him out of bounds. Or is that Rogers who put him out? It was Varney. Yale is I think asking for a measurement. They're going to bring the sticks all the way across the field. I think it's. I think he's got it. Now I take it back. A lot of slack. A lot of slack in that chain as they bring it across, right? Well, you're not too far off. You can see the official indicate that it's about half a yard short. So let's see what Yale decides to do. I know that's the supposed sacrilege for a politician, but a color guy can flip-flop on an issue, can't they? <laughs> so you see how short they are as they spot the ball down, and they look like they're going for it. Yeah, they've got everybody out there. This would be a big gamble in the early going, but this is an offense that has been rolling. It's 
it's also big for Dartmouth because they need one to score early and they need to do it with field position. So if they get the stop here, they're inside the 40. This is a very big play. I, I'm gonna predict as the game goes along, if they can stop them, it's a big play. It gives them a big field position edge. Fourth and inches. Let's see if Wallen will keep it himself. He's gonna roll out. Can looking for, for a little bit more than a few inches. Throwing and complete. First down for Yale. Boy, quite a gamble on fourth and inches. They go to the air and Marshner is there with his 25th catch of the season. You know, I, I know he makes the completed pass, but I'm thinking here when he's this wide open, look at the top of your screen. Nobody there, he needs a half inch. Why risk the pass? Take it over the 50 and pick up the first down, but he delivers the pass right of the numbers, confidence in what he does, and he gained more than he would have with the run. But I think if I was in that situation, looking at what he was looking at, I would have run. So on fourth down, they go for it, get the first down, and they're into Dartmouth territory. Here is Bartholomew, nothing doing. Stopped for a loss of maybe half a yard. So Dartmouth doing a good job there. You see big number 60, John Gibbs, the leader of this defense, getting himself back together a little bit. Already in on three tackles in the first series of downs. That was a good job of just uh, discipline in terms of the defense. Everybody stayed home in their area. They played their lanes. They stretched it out to the sidelines. Rather than committing and going to the ball early, they stayed, waited for the ball carry to come to them, and they took it down. On the draw, Bartholomew, nothing there. Gain of maybe two, but they're doing a good job against Bartholomew so far, who rushed in his debut for Yale, 140 yards against Brown. As you see, head coach Jack Lucky in his second year at Yale. Coming from Worcester Polytechnic. Right now, WPI please. and Amherst in his background. One and nine his first year, but so far two and two coming off a win against Holy Cross, 15-7 in the rain down in Worcester. Third down to 10. Wallen out of the shotgun. Come on, Green, stick him in. Dartmouth bringing more men up to the line and bringing the blitz. Incomplete. That he was had close. the luxury of throwing a high ball to Marshner at 6'6", but that was a little bit out of his reach. And it brings up fourth and ten, and the punting unit will come onto the field for Yale. And the defensive coverage was there. There was no way he was going to get the first down unless he breaks two or three tackles as he came up short. Mike Moravchek on to punt for Yale. Not a good punt. Pops it up. Fair catch is indicated by Reeser, and he takes it right at the 20-yard line. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back to handover for the Big Green's first possession right after this. Welcome back to handover. Homecoming game here, Yale and Dartmouth. Yale did not score on their first possession. Dartmouth ready to take over first and 10. The ball just inside their own 20-yard line. Mike Coffey, the quarterback, he'll throw on first down. And looking for Damon Ferrara, that pass goes incomplete. Let's run down the Dartmouth offense. Forrest Wester, he had that big catch against Lafayette, you'll remember, the fifth-year senior who had surgery on his knee. He's in there starting a wide receiver, although Ferrara was out there for the first snap. Caleb Moore. Yale defense has registered 14 sacks this year, so that offensive line for Dartmouth will be tested. Although 10 of them were last week, it's a, it's a bit skewed, but 14 sacks is 14 sacks. There is Reggie Bellholm with a big hole. Bellholm cuts it to the 30, out to the 32-yard line. A big first, second down carry for Reggie Bellholm, the junior from Chicago, who had 88 yards rushing against Colgate and a touchdown. A good start for Dartmouth on the ground. They've really struggled running the football this year. Watch the move by Bellhorn here. Is he going to go outside or inside? Freezes Blake with a little juke inside, and that gives him about five or six more yards on the pickup. That was a quick feat on the part of Mr. Bellholm. First and ten. Option. Coffee with the pitch to Bellholm, trying to go towards the Yale sideline, and he's brought down as the flag is thrown. And the clock is stopped. Let's run down the Yale defense as they sort out the penalty. Andy Tuzolino, three sacks in three games so far this year. Peter Mazza, the linebacker, leading tackler with 37, anchoring the linebacking core. Ben Blake, 
moved over from safety to cornerback. Did that last week and has two interceptions so far this year. Our referee today is William Gosselin. Play a little bit of a different defense. They've got a five-man front and two linebackers, which means the ends are going to stand up. They're almost linebackers, except they're playing on the line of scrimmage. They'll do the stand-up. They have responsibility to force everything inside and let the two linebackers in the middle clean things up. But uh, you don't see a five-front defense very much anymore, so it should be... We'll see if it's confusing or if it's just something that uh, Dartmouth can handle. Holding penalty against Dartmouth pushes them back 10. Now another throw. This time intended for Wester into double coverage, and it's broken up. Yeah, that's exactly Overthrown right. as well. Well, it's a good thing it was overthrown because he was thrown into double coverage. It probably wasn't the smart pass to, to throw because uh, there was no way he was going to throw it over that safety and get it into Webster, so he had to throw it high, and there was a guy behind him. Fortunately, it was for Dartmouth. It was too high for everybody. Blake and Boxrucker on the coverage. Second down and 20 for Dartmouth. No score here, first quarter. Out of the eye. Yale comes up. Give is to Bob Bunn, who has done a good job here after missing the first two games with a concussion. Bunn gets a couple of yards out to the 25. It's going to bring up a third down and long. Not really the kind of call that's going to get you a lot of yards on second and 20, although I guess they were hoping for they saw the blitz coming, maybe go for a little pop that line of scrimmage and surprise them and pick up uh, maybe, you know, get into the secondary and pick up a decent game. But the odds are against something like that. Westy, Ferrara, Ponce rather, Wester and Ferrara, the receivers, three receivers here on third down the line. Coffey throwing across the middle and through the hands of Ferrara, incomplete. And Wayne Schlobaum and the punting unit will come on for Dartmouth. Once again, three white shirts around the football, one guy in green. That's a dangerous balance of numbers. Schlobaum, very important in today's game. I think one of the keys, as I mentioned earlier, is field position for Dartmouth because they don't have uh, an ability to bring it up and down, the or they haven't shown, let's say, an ability to bring it up and down the field. So they need their punter to give, the, to give them a help in the field, winning the field position battle. And uh, in the two games we've been at, particularly the first game of the season we were here, he w I thought he was the MVP of the game. Averaging 42 and a half yards a punt, second in the Ivy League. At a 70, what was it, 71? 71 yard, and it's stopped on the one. Not much of a win here today. Maybe a little breeze at his back. This is in one of his better efforts. It's taken at the 36 yard line. Making some tackles, moving out towards the 50 yard line. Good return by Todd Tomich, the Ivy League rookie of the year last year, with a good return, and Yale has good field position. Kyle Rogers with the tackle. Here's the return once again. The dangerous part of any return is if you can get past the first wave, you're going to have running room. Does a nice job of weaving through traffic. And there is Rogers, the linebacker, number nine, who wrestles him out of bounds. But that was a good 15-yard return. Bartholomew, nothing doing. Stopped and hit a second time. That's just great defense. Look at all the green shirts around him. Barney had the shirt collar for a little while. He slowed him up enough, and reinforcements came in for a loss of three. It wasn't even that bad a run. He does a good job of fighting his way out of trouble, or at least out of the first wave of tackles. And here comes three more guys, Kane being the lead guy as he goes down. Matt Walker in there as well. Four carries, negative seven yards for Bartholomew. Great start for the Dartmouth defense. Pass play on. Second down intended for Derek Bentley, the fullback. That goes incomplete. It'll bring up a third down and long. Dude, I, I, I like what I've seen so far defensively. This The problem in defending Yale is that they can pass, they can run, and uh, Whalen's got the ability to extract himself from trouble and make something out of nothing. So what you've got to do to defense a team like this is you've got to take one of those elements away from them, one of the weapons. So if you shut, and I think it's the running game, you shut down the running game, as we talked about in the open, then it gives you a better chance to defend against the pass. If you're worried about both every time out, they're going to, you know, they're, sooner or later, they're going to get to you. Third down and 13. Shotgun on third down for Yale. Pass and a catch isn't complete. 
Yes, at the 39-yard line, that's going to be just enough for a first down. Called in by Jake Borden. Big third and long completion. I tell you, the cornerbacks must have respect for the Yale wide receivers because they're playing a zone, they're giving a big cushion, and the Yale guys are just turning up underneath the cornerbacks. In that case, it was Verber. I think he's got to tighten up a little bit and, and not give as much of a cushion or at least make them prove that they can get by you. Because right now, they're just going underneath and they're, w and they're wide open. Get a look at the homecoming crowd here today. A lot of folks coming back to Hanover as they do every year for this big weekend. First and 10 from the 39. Option, Wallen ducked inside to try to get some positive yardage as the Dartmouth defense had that one sniffed out pretty well. I tell you, the people on the left side of the line for Yale are not blocking the linebackers. That's about the third time Barney has stepped in on that option play and just turned it back inside. We saw him with Bartholomew on the, on the previous, uh, before the, before the first down when he got him in the backfield. He was in there again this time, and I think they're just letting the linebackers walk right in. Second down to nine. Bolomew, once again, he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. He does a good job to get back to the line. It's going to bring up a third down to nine. Send a lot of big bodies. The left side of the line pulls out. It's like a power off tackle play. He's got three people from the left-hand side of the line going right with him, but Dartmouth isn't too bothered by that. Yale not really real crisp on their blocking and the offensive line here in the running game so and far. You talked about it in the open, Dave. Bartholomew with that 4 4 9, 40 speed has not had an opportunity to see any open field yet. Dartmouth's been back there to snuff stuff out before it can develop for him. And now Yale will take a timeout. Wallen will use Yale's first timeout. And we will step aside ourselves. 6.52 left to go in a scoreless first quarter. Back to Memorial Field right after this. Today's game is brought to you by Saturn of Nashua. Lazy Boy Galleries of Manchester and Merrimack. Mr. Reuter. United States Cellular Wireless Communications. Cabletron Systems. And by Foss Motors of Exeter. I'll ask you. Um... Third down and nine after the Yale timeout. Wallen back to the shotgun here in a scoreless first quarter. Watch the rollout. Pressure. He's forced to roll out. Gets away from one man and a great defensive play by Dartmouth as Brad Berber came up from his quarterback position to knock the intended pass away. It was intended for Marshner. This is textbook way to defend against the pass. Rogers on the blitz. I think Dartmouth has to do that to try and make things happen. And you can see how dangerous and elusive Whalen is. And there it is, Verber with the left arm goes in and just swats it away. Textbook defensive coverage by the cornerback. Moravchek will punt it away. This one is heading for the end zone, but oh, it dies nicely inside the 10 yard line. Good punt by Mike Moravchek. And Dartmouth will set up first and 10 from their own four yard line. We have a chance to check in with Jamie State. And Jamie. That's right, it's homecoming. One of the guys on the team last year, co-captain Will Harper, tight end. First time back for a game, you were telling me. Kind of weird not to have the helmet on. Yeah, it's really weird, but it's great to be out here watching these guys running around. I, you know, I just hope we can keep the tradition going, the winning Dartmouth tradition. Uh, and I, I'm excited to be out here. I still feel like I'm part of the program, even though I've been gone about a year. Stay with us. We'll tell you what, uh, what Will's doing now after the player. First down to 10. Coffee will hand off to Bell home, who ducks inside and is brought down at the 6. Back down to Jamie. Old tight ends become investment bankers, apparently, in New York City. How's that going for you? Yeah, I'm excited to be in New York. It's a, it's a great time. You know, I, I definitely miss Hanover, though. New York is kind of the anti-Hanover, I guess, right? Do you, do you like New York City? You know, I haven't quite made up my mind yet. I like my job. I don't know if I like the city, but uh, I'm glad to be where I am. Tight end, number 3 on the depth chart today, Eric. Thank you very much, Jamie. Whistle, this play stopped before it even kicks in the gear. It's going to be a penalty against Dartmouth. You know, Will's a country boy. You know, you put the country boy in the city, it's going to take a little while. Well, I'm going to tell you something. When you're in your 20s, there's probably no place more fun to live than New York City because there's a lot going on. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Still second down. Once you figure out the right time to avoid the West Side Highway and... Uh, well, if you live right there, you don't have to worry about that's it. That's true, too. But, well, what, you know, you I'll tell you what, you need a Dartmouth education to figure out a New York City <laughs> subway map, though. That's true. That's for certain. 
Second down and 11 as they move it back half the distance. Coffee throwing from his own end zone, looking for Bun. The fullback has it. Gets starting with a little breathing room out to the seven. That play, I, I think he was the only guy out on the pattern, but he just you know, it's just Bun into the flat. Look at Bun. He just runs immediately out to the left-hand side of your screen. Coffee does a nice job of putting the ball in the numbers. It's underneath the zone defense. Gives him a little bit of running room. It's a good, safe play when you're in the kind of position Dart was, Dartmouth was in. Third down and six. They need to get across the 14-yard line for a first down. And the handoff goes to Bellholm. Does he have enough to get to the 14? <laughs> Yale doesn't think so. He's going to be close. I think he's going to be just short of a first down, and Schlobaum's going to come on to punt. I, I think in this situation, you got to put your head down. I like the call. I like draws out of shotguns. Very uh, it fools Yale initially, but right there, he's got to put his head down, not run vertically. He's got to put it down and go for the flag. North and south at that point. Schlobaum comes in on fourth down and short, and he'll punt it away for the second time. That's horizontally, right? Yeah. Always get those mixed up. I wouldn't do well in the subway system in New York City. You wouldn't do well adjusting your television set either, it sounds like. <laughs> that vertical and horizontal hole. This one doesn't turn over for Schlobaum either. Tomich does not signal a fair catch. He pays the price as Verber drops the hammer down, but it's good field position for Yale as they'll set up in Dartmouth territory. Tell you what, Ken Phelan, I think, thought he called for a fair catch. He's standing right by him. Let him catch it and take a step before Verber delivered the blow. So more good field position for Yale. As you take a look at today's officials, led by William Gosselin from Lemonster, Mass. Once First and ten. Once again, Yale has got the field position advantage. Everything has been from their 40 on, and uh, Dartmouth has been playing in the, in the shadow of their goalpost. Wallen scrambles, will tuck it away. He's at the 40, and he's pushed out of bounds right there at the 40-yard line. Gain of seven. I just love mobile quarterbacks because they just add such a dimension to your offense. I mean, he's coming out. He's coming to the left-hand side of your screen as he rolls. That's pretty much a run. I think that's a run unless the pass is there as opposed to a passing play by design. He's got a lot of room. He's got good speed, and he gets uh, picks up about six or seven. That's a nice gain on first down. Wallen's a guy who missed a lot of last year with an injury, and two years ago was a wide receiver for the junior varsity team at Yale. Here's Bartholomew. Gonna be close to a first down. So you're saying we're gonna see one of those passes on a, a reverse, and then I love those plays too. Because they never caught carrot. Uh, I don't know why you don't see that more because they in this kind of a, on this kind of not in the pros, but in college football, because they never cover the quarterbacks going out of the backfield. It was enough for a first down. Bartholomew will step aside for this first down play. So we'll put that in the back of our minds. Maybe if they need to pull one out of the bag of tricks, we'll see that. First and 10. Ball at the Dartmouth, 36-yard line, scoreless first quarter. Give to the backup tailback, Conrad Sopilnikow. That is his first carry of the season. Much to the light of play-by-play -play announcers everywhere. <laughs> that's, that, that's one you put on your chart phonetically. You know, I, I didn't even... Didn't even want to try to figure it out on the fly, <laughs> so I, I tried to do my best. So you see squatting down there is head coach Jackson Lucky. We talked about his background, WPI and Amherst. His career, 59-33-2. and two. This is the 11th season as a head coach. And second in New Haven. Second down and long five. Wallen, once again, not given much time to throw, but always oh. makes the most of it and gets about, well, two yards on that play out to Derek Bentley. Yeah, I think... Dartmouth is sending the linebackers in on the blitz. Nice play action fake, but before he can even look, here comes Kane after him, and there are other people coming on the other side as Rodgers takes him down in the flat. But every flat pass play we've seen so far, one of the linebackers is coming after the quarterback, and I think the reason they do that is because they're trying to make big plays. They've got to make things happen, so they're going to gamble a little bit, put more people into the rush, and less defending the pass. Wallen rolling to his right, will throw across his body, and complete. 
first down for Yale. Jake Fuller hauled it in, his 10th catch of the season. And Yale is in the red zone. That's a tough pass, threw it against his body. He's a lefty running right, so he's got to turn to make that throw. Look at this here, this, this thing is all footwork. Quick turn, gets his feet under him, and wham. Throws it on the line, not the tightest spiral, but certainly got there in position for the catch. This is an area where Yale has had some difficulty this year inside the 20-yard line. Coach said, like you said this week, that they're, the fact that they don't have a real bruising running back as Sobilnikov gets the carry, gets inside the 15. They don't have a big bruising running back who can pound out some four or five-yard gains inside the five. They don't have that bruiser. He likes to call him a big banger to get inside the inside the, when they're inside the red zone. Well, if you can't do that, then what you've got to do is if you've got a mobile quarterback, you let him roll out, give him the option to run or pass. I think that's very dangerous inside, particularly inside the 10-yard line, and when you need a couple of yards on first down, I mean, on third down. And uh, so I would look for them to do that. Put the pressure on the linebacker. Should I come up or should I stay back? Second down and seven. Give once again to Sapilnikow, and he's brought down after a gain of about a yard. John Lyons said this week that emotion would be very important for his team. Of course, homecoming, and you always want to play well as the former players like Will Harper come back, and especially when you go 18-2 and two over the last two years, puts the pressure up a little bit more to try to match what the teams have done in the future, and I'm sure these guys come back and remind these current players of that. And you want to show people like that. I mean, it's just that your pride as a player, you want to do that. The other thing about Yale is that they have not had a lead. They have not scored the first period all year. They've been behind every game they've played, so it's important they get a score. Wallen, rolling, throwing, incomplete. We'll have a chance for a field goal right here with 1.33 left to go in the opening quarter. Once again, the mobile guy putting pressure on. You saw Varney was going, took the inside route. Well, Wallen just ran around him and just throws the ball wide. He had the receiver open down there on the two-yard line. Moravchek comes on to attempt a 30-yard field goal on the season. He's five of nine, kicked three last week in the rain at Holy Cross. They got a lot of Jakes on this team. Jake Gordon, Jake Fuller, all wide receivers. 30-yard attempt. Curling in, and it's good. For the first time this year, Yale has scored in the first quarter. It's 3-0 Bulldogs. You talked about it in the open, Dave, the bend-but-don't-break defense, and Dartmouth's defense, once again, they've been on the field a lot this year, and they've done some really good things, but you can't ask them to come up time after time after time to stop a team, particularly when the team is getting the ball inside of their own 50 which is what's happened today. That, this, in addition to Yale moving the ball, this was really a field position score because they only had to take it 30 yards or 40 yards as opposed to where Dartmouth's been getting it on the 10. They started on the 15 and inside the 10 and their two possessions. And sooner or later, that wears you down and you wind up giving up scores, even if you are playing good defense. Well, Dartmouth's offense struggling all year. Coffee so far today, one of four passing for five yards. Wallen by comparison. 7 of 12 for 66 yards. I like what the game they've been calling so far when they've had the ball, though. I think they've got to pass first, get, get some yardage on first down, and then run off the pass. Because I think they have to get Coffee into a rhythm. We've seen him when he's gotten going in, at, in, at, in spurts in the games that we've been at. He's been very effective as a runner and as a passer. He struggled at other times, but I think the key thing is to get him into the rhythm, and the offense will, will flow from there. check to kick it away. I love his number. Not the typical kicker number. This is a pop-up. Bob Bunn settles under it. Signaled a fair catch at the 22. Now he wants to run it. I don't know if he was signaling a fair catch or playing like a shortstop and calling for it, saying, I've got it. What you can't do in football, you can't raise your hand up there or the officials are going to blow the whistle once you catch the football. I think that's what he was doing because there was absolutely no hesitation. Once he caught the ball, he took off. So I think that was the baseball player coming out, yeah. Bob Bunn, saying, I've got it, I've got it. I agree with you. He'd well, make a great shortstop. You wouldn't have any collisions with any outfielders <laughs> if he was out there. Well, you wouldn't want to, that's for that's sure. That's true, too. So here's the Dartmouth offense. Bell Holm has done a good job. He's gotten all the calls from the tailback position so far. It's a question of can they get the passing game in gear? 
I like There's those. a slight delay here as the chains have become tangled on the far sideline and they're trying to straighten out the kinks that have tied up in a knot. I'm sure Dartmouth doesn't want them to solve that problem until they give up the ball. Which might help them keep the ball. Well, they got the chain straightened out and Dartmouth is at the line. First down and 10. Karshevsky, Ponce, and Wester, the three wide receivers out there, so maybe they do want to come out and throw the ball here on first down. They give it to Bell Home. Bell Home out to 25, gain of about two. We go down to the sidelines and Jamie Speak. Well, you guys talked about emotion and how Coach John Lyons called for his team to be all fired up, and this defense, when they came off the field after allowing the field goal, was anything but fired up. Uh, John Gibbs, the All-American, was the only guy who had anything to say, and uh, all he basically said was, come on, guys, we can do better than that. They're sitting around very quietly. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt, call it business-like right now. Second down and seven for the Dartmouth offense. Fun goes in motion. Coffee will pass. Running out of time, but now with a lot of running room on the far side. Out to the 40. He's hit right there. First down, Dartmouth. And hit hard, I mean. <laughs> and I'll tell you, one missed block. Webster had the block in there, and if he had sealed the corner back off, Coffey's got the whole sideline. He just couldn't get the angle on him, and he held up at the last second where the impulse is to go after him. It would have been a clip. Look at the block by it's Bellhorn that Sorrentos was going to get him, and he just stepped in and shielded him. Coffey sees the whole sideline open. Down in the lower right of your screen is where the block with Webster. He holds up there very smart because it would have been a clip. That's a pretty good open field tackle. Fumble. Yale football. After the biggest play from scrimmage, the scramble by Coffey, Dartmouth comes back and coughs it up, and Yale comes away with it. At the bottom of the pile, it looked like it was Peter Maloney. Just never got it from center and couldn't get back to the ball as he gets, he gets knocked out as McKnight pulled out. The play was going to the right, and he pushed Coffey off of the area where he, before he could get in there to recover the fumble. Yale leads Division I AA football in turnover margin. They're at a plus nine. They've taken away 14. They've only turned it over five times. Dartmouth is a plus one, but now they are even after the first turnover of the game. First and, and ten for Yale. Great field position one more time at the 38. I was going to say, that's where they kill you when you have them and you give the other team field position. On the reverse, coming around with a big running room is Jake Fuller down to the 25 and hard helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Delivered by Todd Spanish, but it's a big carry and a first down. Gain of 15. I'll tell you what, though. He came a long way to get into that play. And I thought he would. they weren't going to get him until he hit the 15-yard line. Great misdirection on the reverse. Spanish is going to come out of the bottom left of your screen. He was way over on the other side of the field. And look at the tackle in the open field. Terrific play on the recovery by Spanish. Five and I love the call. Penalty on the defense. First down. And you saw on that replay, Spanish, after the helmet hit, went up with his right hand and got the hand in the face mask. It's a five-yard face mask penalty, so that adds to the gain. Down to the 19-yard line. Clock running in the first quarter will come to an end. Yale with a 3-0 lead and in business inside the Dartmouth 20-yard line. And that's it for the first quarter. We'll be back with the second quarter here in Hanover right after this.